Super Flower Moon in Scorpio reading. Wow. Four super moons in a year and our last one until April 21st, I do believe. April pink moon anyways. Now we know we're going through a door. And there's the door that we're going through as we leave the past behind us. There was a message within this card when we received it. And here's its connection to the Scorpio full moon. It says right here, the claws of Scorpio. So the claws of Scorpio have their grasp upon us. And this is from Libra to Libra. We are balancing here. This is the balance of the karmic scales. And we're going home and what they've shown me is the whole entire purpose of this is we're opening up we're opening up a new pathway so the information that we are seeking within the unknown is to open up a new pathway whichever way it's happening because this has to do with the loop they've shown me that there's a loop here and we're gonna we're gonna spiral out of the loop but we need a new pathway in order to do it and this is what we're having the access to is the ac access to the new path, but it's through a resurrection. It's through a rebirth because we know that when at our spring equinox reading, this was all about rebirth. Well, that's the time we're in. We're in our resurrection phase. We've been resurrected and we are literally going through the door. And this door is connected to the many pathways of our spiritual exp expansion, our many pathways home. And this sacred abyss was here to show us that. And that sacred abyss, abyss is word working with the goddess Isis. And she had a message for us. We are healing with the divine feminine energy. And what are we healing from? We know we're healing from competitiveness competitiveness of self within competitiveness with others competitiveness because all the lack of the templates have created is all of us feel unequal so we have to compete for our place but that's what we're shifting that's what we're changing we're not competing for our place we already know our place exists within us through us and we stop competing because that's a waste of energy. And that's through the creation of unconditional love. And it's through the acceptance of one another's universe. The fact that we're all unique. That's where we find the balance. That's where we're able to heal. Because we understand we're all unique. But we all come together as one. We all equate to the whole. But we can all break apart into our own little universes. But each universe is connected. We're healing from this. This is just like the stars in the sky. We are just like the stars in the sky. There's enough room for all of us to shine. We are not wasting this energy anymore because this energy is what's keeping us a prisoner. We're no longer gonna be in disillusion because our disillusions are holding us back. We're finding a solution and we're finding a solution to our fulfillment through these new pathways that are opened up. And first and foremost, we must face our isolation. And there is the duel. There is the competitiveness. We must stop fighting within in order to stop fighting without. So we're going to create stability 
through a challenge. This is what the moon has shown us. And we had a great time spending time with La Luna this morning. As you can see, it's dawn now. The sun is here. We're gonna put these cards back in the deck, get a quick reshuffle and see what the moon has to officially say. Right now. Oh, these are gonna charge for a minute because there's just something else we need to discuss. And there were messages to the masculine and feminine that were released early so we could get a head start on what we're doing here. And as we know, we're using the King of Cups energy, Scorpio. This is where we are seeing and seeking from within to without. And our light is radiating from within to without at this point. And it's helping us to heal. It's helping us with our growth. It's helping us with our manifestations. It's helping us to seek. We are seeing. And the King of Cups is connecting us to the devil energies. What we need to see in order to transform, in order to free ourselves. Because we're no longer going to be prisoner. We're going home. And we're going to go home through our death and transformation, our resurrections, beginning anew, creating anew. This is the where the new pathway opens up. And it's represented by a moth here. And we know moths follow the light within the dark. And we must follow the light within the dark. And this has to do with the freedom to be truth, to speak truth, to understand truth. And this also has to do with not being afraid of the unknown. And here in the Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment card, we're no longer afraid of the unknown. She's underwater and she's making connections within. She's seeking, she's using her intuition. And it was through this process, you know, in this death card, there's also the spider web. And we know the spider web, the spider is connected to creation and the web that we are weaving, our patterning. And this right now has to do with patterning. And our patterning is connected to the pathway. And it's something that we are doing within our patterning, a shift, a change that creates the open door, the pathway. And for all of us, it's going to be unique because we are all unique and our healing pathways are all unique. Okay, let's see what LaLuna ha Guess we're not. I'm being told we're getting a message from Spirit right away. Spirit wants to speak. We're going to let Spirit speak. Let's see what Spirit has to say. That was quick, Spirit. Well, Grandmother Earth. Freedom Horse. Okay. Smudging Ceremony and Grandmother Earth. And see, I don't believe myself personally that it's Grandmother Earth. To me, it's Grandmother Moon. It's always been Grandmother Moon and it's Mother Earth. The Smudging Ceremony. Let go of the past. Purify, detox, release. Whatever doesn't serve or support you in your life, cleanse your body and environment by doing space clearing and clutter clearing. Let go of the old, discarded and unused to make way for new energy and new beginnings. Eat lightly, drink lots of fresh water and consume food with strong life force. And that's, you know, high vibe foods. And this is the time we're in because this is about our best lives, guys. So yes, I know. It's really easy to fall into old patterning, but there's a shift in patterning right there. And this is an uplifting pattern. Detoxification, we know, is important right now because we're healing from emotional imprints and emotional wounding. That's the message we received to Divine Masculine and Feminine. So we need to be clear in order to see what we're seeking. Or we might take the wrong path. We don't want to, well, if we take the wrong path, we're going to learn something. All right. 
And this is all about, you know, using smudging. Smudging ceremonies are very sacred, the purification process. And this is, we do this because we can't see clearly what's around us. And we need to see clearly what's around us. So we're going to do some purification work of our environment and ourselves to feel lighter and brighter with it. So we're a clearer channel for the light, of the light. And it specifically says, the brilliance that pours through you can heal and help many people, but first the path has to be clear. And that's what we're doing. We're clearing the path. The path is not clear right now. Grandmother Earth, she's all about getting grounded. She's all about not rushing and being in a hurry to where we're going. We're gonna ground, we're gonna assess where we've been, we're gonna assess where we're at, and we're going to assess where we're going. Because we can't see clearly right now. We don't, we're not moving on. This is the direct message. Until we can see clearly, we're not moving on. Your native spirit wants you to know. Grandmother Earth provides the trees, plants, flowers, rivers, streams, oceans, and mountains, along with some valleys, supporting us all with her bounty. She is stable and strong in her devotion to us. You are supported and loved, even if you're not always sure of it. Strength is growing within you. Don't rush. Slow down. The seeds that you plant now will bring abundance in the future. But only if you take the time to nurture those new beginnings. And there's our message. We need to nurture our new beginning after our resurrection. We have to find our strength there. We have to allow the time. walk barefoot with mother earth in order to ground ourselves and it's definitely connected to this freedom horse you know we know that the horse energy is helping us to create our markaba and move forward with healing and that's that's healing that's healing on all levels that's healing your with your dna in order to transform into a whole new you And it's connected to the pathway that we are going and the new patterning that's being created here in order to create movement. And that's what La Luna is helping us in order, well, helping us to do here. So there is going to be movement and we're going to ask La Luna how so and we're going to use this deck. Communication. The earth element, we know the earth, the earth, the air element, and the air element is offering us our solution. And this is connected to the lifting of the curse and our truth. Not being afraid to speak our truth, not being afraid to be the truth. And it's connected to our set of pentacles. Part of our fortune increase, because the other part of our fortune increase is our ten of cups. And the tenth house, the world. And this is expanding. This is expanding from the devil energies and the hold that the devil energies has on us with our experience, our wisdom. So we're using our experience and our wisdom in tandem in order to shift. And the thing is, is that this is connected to the work that we are doing with the grid of, for, like, of the collective. Because all this work we're doing is for others to feed from. All this new patterning. It's time. This is connected to, to it being time. It's time for something, and we're going to find out what that is connected to. And it, it all has to do with the void of course moon, and this is when the moon is missing. She's in transit. So we must, we can't see, so we must trust in the divine, and that's the message we are receiving. We can't see clearly right now. But we are. And this is part of the experience. Sometimes we, we can't see clearly because that's how we're going to understand. And that's why we need to give things time and allow things to shape shift. We can't just want what we want when we want it and then get frustrated. That's the devil energies. That's the tricks of the matrix. And we're, we're seeing through the trickery. 
We also know that from the messages to the masculine and feminine. And we know we are connecting to the energy of Taurus. I have, and we are, we do have. We, all, we do have, we're not in lack of. We have access to happiness. We have access to new vibrations. We have access to be a co-creator and shape shift our reality. We just have to do the work. We have to allow it time. We have to allow the process. We have to surrender to the process. And we, going, we are going to be receiving a message. This third house and messages, this activation card is connected to the message that we are going to be receiving that's connected to its time and the world. And it's connected to the seventh house and partnerships. And the seventh house is our connection to the Libran energy, which is allowing us to find balance between the masculine and feminine. That's what this is all about at the end of the day. The equality between the masculine and feminine and the feminine restoring her rightful place. And we know this is all about our, <laughs> our life's purpose, our Ten of Cups, and now we have it. We've got our Ten of Pentacles and our Ten of Cups, our fortune increased. This is end game. This is new earth. This is home. This is healing. This is... And we were, all, we were talking about how the nodes of the moon have transited. The nodes of the noon are... The north node was in Cancer. The south node was in Capricorn. And now... The north node is in Gemini and the south node is in Sagittarius. And we heal from the south node our life's debts with the energy of the north node, our life's purpose. But it still equates back to what's going on in the south node. So that energy is always extremely important. We're moving on. We're moving forward. We're having access to a new pathway. It's just not clear yet. We're going to ask these cards right here what's being activated. It's... being activated right now and then we're gonna get some tarot and see what's actually happening there we go that's what's happening let's see what this cure did do all right, I like that, because that's true. That's just some straight truth running out of room over here. Put that over there. The sacred fool. And it's connected to what you want wants you. And there's our Fibonacci sequence and spiral being expanded. Here's our new beginning, and it's a sacred beginning. This is the sacred fool. Look, guys, we've done healing from the devil. Look at that. We're in charge now. The fool is a great rebel, able to thwart convention and tell the truth without restraint. Your heart is a wonderful, powerful, sacred fool. It cares not for the right way to do things. It cares not for what the mind says is real and not real. It lives accordingly to an inner wisdom that cannot be dictated or controlled by anything. It loves and it lives. It is what it is. This oracle heralds a time now, now or imminent, when you will feel inspired, alive, passionate for what you can offer to the world. It says to you, don't try to be appropriate. Don't try to be socially acceptable and worry about what others may think about what you are doing. Just be. If you want to wear a mad hat, Willis doing so, fine. The sacred fool in you is willing to leave behind what has been because it no longer feels right to stay attached to it. The sacred fool in you trusts life completely. It would never occur to this part of you to try and outsmart life or resist its flow. And guys, this helps us. This helps us with co-creating. This helps us with healing. This helps us with just not feeling alone. We understand there's a power bigger than us. And we're not, remember, we're not manipulating. We're not in, you know, in going to get into lower vibrationals because we feel out of control. This is about forward movement, healing, and expansion. 
More often than not, it recognizes that the mind is a monkey puppet on strings and is coerced into fear when it could be playfully dwelling in the radical spontaneity of life. So this is where we need to untw untwist things. And we untwist them by, we have fun within the moment. We free that inner child. We apply that vibration. We're not going to get lost in fear. This is such a waste of energy. This is such a waste of time to get lost into all of this stuff. We can be playing. We can be radically in the spontaneity of life. That we have access to that vibration at any time. We just have to work at it. So the sacred fool in you urges your mind to let itself be pulled into joy by your heartstrings, not into fear and doubt by the controlling machines of the mass media. This oracle brings you a message now. It's time to play. It's time for you to let happen. Life happen completely and unreserved in an unscripted way. The more bizarre, left it feel unexpected and apparently ridiculous, the better. It may not feel safe or appropriate. That is okay. This is a good thing, actually. It's a sign that you are breaking with your own self-imposed conventions. It is a time to move beyond them now because a bigger life adventure is calling you. And it's true. This is all about what's calling us because we're being called home. And guys, remember, we're using the energy of the opposites to heal. So, you know, if you've just been living this life that, you know, you you feel safe and you've conformed and you've been in the box, now you're going outside of the box. This is about feeling the opposite of what you felt in order to heal. There is wonderful news. If the desire of life to operate more, more radically through you so that you become the conduit through which miracles and a crazy wild synchronicity can occur, you are becoming more electric. You are more plugged into the apparent randomness of life. Apparent because there is a refined intelligence behind it all. The sacred fool goes with this without having to understand any of it. And that's a good thing because then we're just experiencing it. We're experiencing life's unfathom unfathomable genius. We're getting a genuine glimpse into it. You take your journey and you may find that people around you are challenged. And this is all about whatever falls away from us. We're not going to worry about it. It's meant to fall. What is meant for us will never pass, pass us by. We know this. Now, what you want wants you. Do you dare to believe that what you want is also wanting you? The genuine desires of your heart are the sacred purpose of the soul, swathed in pleasure. Look at that. And that's why we need to have access to what our heart wants, our heart's desires, because it's part of our connection to home. Yet, if you have been shamed, judged, made to feel guilt over or denied your natural desires or pleasures in any way, you may have developed a very tricky and complicated relationship with the yearnings of your heart. And that's why we're healing so that we can untwist what's twisted. We often learn to distrust our own desires and come to believe that they, that they are something to be overcome or avoided. We may even feel that we try to want second best, disbelieving we are worthy of our first choice, of what we really genuinely want and would fulfill us deeply. Perhaps we have conditioned ourselves to believe that getting what we want is for others and not us. This oracle comes to you with a healing message for you. First, trust in what you truly want. No substitutions and make dues, but what you truly bring, what would truly bring a sense of passionate, playful purpose and fulfillment to your life. You might, you might not know anything more than, I just wanna sing or I wanna write. I wanna help animals, I wanna paint. Start with what you know and hold in your heart as you do the healing process below. If you genuinely do not know what your heart wants, you will very much enjoy the process of exploring your desires by making gentle and persistent inquiries of yourself. 
Ask yourself what it is that truly moves you. Give this matter consistent attention without forcing your answers. They may come in a sudden flood or slowly over time. And here's how we can go. We can do so. As you get to know your genuine desires and give yourself permission to feel and receive them, a powerful sequence is set in motion. From the depths of the universe, your desire hurdles its way towards you as the perfect manifestation. It is coming to you even now, manifesting itself as the best situation or relationship or circumstances to bring fulfillment to your heart. And we know this is about our fulfillment. Radiance to your life and a creative awakening. So don't give up. Keep dreaming of your fulfillment. But don't imagine it as always awaiting you in some distant future. Instead, play with what it feels like to be fulfilled right now. Remember, guys, we're in the energy of what we're creating. We're in the energy of what we're manifesting. We're in the energy of how our desires are going to make us feel. And we're going to play with that. We're going to play with that. These are vibrations to manifest with. This oracle brings you the message that whatever you see is coming to you. Your desire is already on its way. It is closer than you think. And soon you will be able to touch it, see it, feel it, and enjoy it. You will then become inspired for your next manifestation based on the true desires of your heart. And I really think it's connected to this message that is right here. I think that this is key in what's happening right now. What is going on? It is because it's connected to focus on the light. And we know we're focusing on the light. We're following the light. Relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. Dear sacred rebel, this moment in your life requires courage. Fortunately, you possess that in bucket loads. You are being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of higher voltage reality. And that's what's happening, guys. Higher voltage reality requires a more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered into the greater heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us, and with us more quickly, more radically, more beautifully, and more boldly. You are now being invited into this new reality where things happen quickly and accordingly to bold, loving optimism. This is a reality not only of potential, but of manifestation of the great, big, cosmic yes. And here it is. We know this is about our divine inheritance. We know that we are birthing our connection to the light, to the heavens through us. And it's through the earth. It's through our connection to the earth. The, to access this reality, you have to leap from known waters. And others may think you're crazy for doing so. You have to leave behind the dark, weighty grip of hesitation, procrastination, second guessing and the belief you have to do everything on your own you may fear for your life how will you be safe in the wild electrical pulse of so much aliveness how will you function without the hazy sleep inducing paralysis of playing it safe taking too long and placing lesser priorities have lesser priorities above your sacred art of life that's beautiful. Wow. Our sacred art of life. How will you hold yourself back if you don't hold on to fear? You don't need to worry about such things. Life is wild, but it's also wise. It is a force of startling raw awakening at times, but it's also the natural process of evolution where all things mature according to the seasonal cycle in right timing. You are a part of, not apart from, that process. And that's what's happening. It's time. The timing. This is about the timing. This is about what's written in the universe. What's written in the stars. This is co-creating. So they're helping us to co-create what is happening. And this is the new patterning being created. You can see the new patterning right there. 
connected to the light. We, we can't fear the unknown. We can't fear what we're seeking. There's so many messages to show we are in a time of what's unknown. We are in a time of seeking the information we need to see in order to expand that Fibonacci spiral and our evolution, our great evolution, the golden ages, the evolution of our species, the healing of with Mother Earth, her evolution. Focus on the light. A tremendous force of light is gathering around you. It is attracted to the purity of your intention to create from your heart. That is key in how we need to see where we're going. This is about our integrity. This is about our purity. That's why we are purifying our soul in order to expand. As your intention grows, so does the light. As the light grows, so does your intention. Magic wants to happen for you now. The synchronicity, perfect timing, opportunities and information that are needed will seem to be drawn right to your door. You may start to feel as if you cannot walk outside without stumbling into something helpful, wonderful and inspiring. And now this is our message from the universe, from source, that our signs and synchronicities are going to amp up so we can travel along those pathways and see what we need to see, expand what we need to expand. Because remember guys, it's about the balance. Everyone says within, 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 but it is also without, that's the balance. So we go within to find the answers. We go within to resonate, to go, we go within to see what we're seeking, but then we receive signs and synchronicities from the universe that we are co-creating and where we need to go next. Where's the trail? You know, you, you hear a song here and it resonates differently. You get, it resonates within someone comes up and gives you a message and you know it's from the divine it's from it has to do with your path it has to do with the information we're seeking where we're going it is the confirmation from without what's happening and sometimes yes we can get signs within that does happen okay we're gonna move on we're gonna get some tarot no, we're not going that way. We're going this way. We're going to see. You know, this card is just singing to me. We're not going to receive the message of it. But we're coming back to life. This is what we're doing. We're coming to life. Through this high voltage energy. It's going to restore us after our resurrection. That's why we just need to chill out and let things exp let things go down now. Not We're not going to micromanage us to be in control of this. We're going to let our instincts lead the way. We're going to let our int intuition lead the way. This is the energy of the Hierophant with Scorpio now. So we've got the Hierophant, the feminine energy seeking and seeing the masculine energy expanding it with spirit. So realistically, we have our soul and our spirit right there within the energy of the Hierophant. The feminine and the masculine. Now we've got Scorpio. Birth, death, rebirth, resurrection, shape shifting, creating anew. And we're connected to our gifts. We're connected to the water energies. We're connected to our intuition, to sensing, to feeling. And this is about our feelings. We're detoxifying our feelings in order to see clearly. We're moving on. As soon as we can see clearly, we're moving on and we're putting down our burdens in order to do so. We know this is about the pathway now and our flame expanding. This is us going within and healing and seeing what we need to see. This is making the path clearer. And it's solar plexus healing. And it's connected to the two of cups and the equality between the masculine and feminine. And this is the healing. This is the healing taking place and happening between the masculine and feminine. And there it is, our new beginning. 
there is access to the high voltage energy. There we're achieving it. We're raising our vibration. We're expanding and we're expanding to new earth. We're expanding through love. There's the connection. We're setting ourselves free in order to go home. And this is a pathway being cleared, but the pathway is being cleared through us. And the wheel turns. And as the wheel turns, that's our new patterning. We are connected to home. And we've healed through the energy of the heavens because we healed from our competitiveness. We healed from our dueling, from our active conflict, our waste of energy. And through the energy of the magician, we manifest healing. And we expand our healing through the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Pentacles with our new patterning. And that is connected to the water energies and the earth energies. And we have expanded. Now, we made it home. We're home there. We're just chilling. And let's see how we're expanding that. With the masculine energy. The eight of materials. And there is the expansion. We're working away on our fortune increase. And this is what we're doing to turn the wheel. And this is connected to our new patterning and seeing what we need to see. This is the new direction. Confirmation right there. This is the new direction. Queen of Materials. Queen of Materials. Queen of Emotions. Boy, the connection to the Queen of Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. It's lasered into my brain right now. I mean, I can see it there one right now. We're using those energies together in order to heal and manifest and see what we need to see and move forward with it. We're using our emotions. Our emotions are... The purification of our emotions are helping us to see clearly now where we need to go. This is using our, uh, our abilities in order to expand. This is healing with the Queen of Cups. This is nurturing. This is nurturing energy. It's going to allow us the time to expand. Like I said, the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Emotions, the Queen of Materials. They are one right now. So we can ground and expand our healing, our gifts. What we are seeing as we are seeking. We need to expand it here. We need to materialize it. We need to create it. In the 3D from the 5D. And this is doing so. This is literally like going from the 5D to the 3D. And we're going to we're going to use our strength. And temperance is here to help us to balance. And it is confirmed. There's the two of cups. The two of emotions. So this is about the equality. The connection, the healing. The feminine taking her rightful place beside the masculine. And you know, for you masculines joining me here too, this is the feminine energy within you too. You know, many masculines, have, like we all have feminine and masculine energy within us. And as a masculine, you have that feminine energy within us. And that's that feminine energy within you taking its rightful place beside the masculine. To help you restore balance, to help you create wholeness, to help you to be a whole person, to help you 
to heal and move forward and evolve the species. And now we have the muse of, emo of emotions. And now we have the king and queen of cups. Wholeness achieved. There's the Scorpio energy. These are the same gas. Muse of emotion. Compassion, joy, the freedom to feel all the emotions as a way of self-discovery. Transcendent states of bliss, meditation, inner calm, and knowing. Being totally in touch with your desires and with balanced and peaceful emotions. And we avoid moodiness here because moodiness gets us acting lower vibrational and we can't see clearly. This is about seeing clearly where we're going. And... What are our emotions teaching us? What are they showing us? Because our emotions are energy in motion. There's a charge there. Rinsing the shadow. And this is what we're doing. This is exactly what we're doing. We're rinsing the shadow. Come tiny vessel of love to the place where the water drops off and pours everything into the sweet shell of life. This message of highest love resides where all the bits and pieces of your anger and sadness are brewed and alchemized into beautiful experiences for the soul. For they too are experiences to be cherished and learned from. Come meditatively, quietly, calmly, with everything you are, leave nothing behind, for you will need it all in this place of mindful understanding. So we need it all, all of it. The dark, the light, and the shadows, because we're gonna sort through it all. Steer clear of the manipulation and moodiness and come into the night on the sweet waves of kindness, for those are the waves that will push you past the riptide. So that's how we're gonna heal from the shadow energies. We're gonna stay clear of manipulation and moodiness because those are just gonna keep us in that loop. But we're gonna steer clear of that to expand. These waves will float you to the sandbanks, sandbanks of connection and invite you to explore your inner world with the gentlest compassion. Your task is to simply be true to your heart and accepting of the nature that is, as the healing waters of pure love are headed your way the healing waters of pure love are headed our way we know that the two of cups is here attend awareness of perception reaction emotion empathetic and true sensitive wisdom who crosses the sea the subtle magic of now lies with you hmm the subtle magic of now lies with you so we are going to see clearly and this has to do with changing our perception okay guys because we know that's what we're doing within the Nine of Cups. And as you can see, I didn't put these cards back in the deck. I wasn't meant to. My plan was I was going to, but I didn't do so because it wasn't meant to happen. So that they could be here and we could discuss this. Now, this is changing our perception. So we have perceived that if something bad happens to us, we fall apart. And if like, wow, we're like, we're frantic. We're out of control. Why is this happening? And if something's good, we're allowed to be in joy and we're allowed to just be happy. But this is where we need to change our perception. Now, something negative has happened to us, but it doesn't mean we fall apart. It doesn't mean, oh my God, everything's horrible. Shut it all down, bull. Oh, now everything's good. Okay, everything's good again. Oh yes, all right, we can be happy. That's exhausting and it's not true. We have experience of negative and positive and shadows are created, but we are magical beings that can heal through them and evolve and expand and we use them as experiences. So now rather than when something negative happens to us or we feel a negative emotion, we don't have to fall apart. Yes, we can still, we still need to grieve and purify and honor the situation, but this is standing our ground with our light and understanding, okay, you know, this is a negative emotion. These are negative emotions. This is a negative experience, but Rather than react, rather than go lower vibrational, rather than get moody and manipulative in order to heal and get what I want, because I don't want to feel like this, mm -mm, I'm not going to get manipulative. I'm not going to get moody. 
I'm gonna honor the experience. I'm gonna surrender to the experience. What do I need to see from this? What do I need to understand? Because something is being reflected back to me and I need to see it. And we guys, we gotta stop being afraid of this negativity or we're never gonna see where we're going because we're building off the truth. New Earth is building off the truth. We're not building off the lies. We're not building off the illusions. We're building, we're, we're building off of what's real. Now, we're going to, we're going to have to do some surrendering here. We're going to have to do some growth. We're going to have to seek some discomfort like those yes theory guys. Those yes theory guys that are always talking about seeking discomfort. Look, they know where it's at. And I know this is hard, guys. I've been trying this. I've been actively trying this because I'm a Piscean. I'm very emotional and very emotionally charged. And when things get negative, whoo, watch that self-sabotage behavior come on down. Watch it. Oh, I'm going to feel like this. I'm going to rip it all down. I'm going to destroy it all. That's the kind of thinking we need to stop from. When we rip it all down. We're just going to go that much back. We just have to climb that much back farther up. It's not and manipulating too, you know, I've been there. I don't want to feel like this. So how can I manipulate my way out of the situation when I was lower vibrational? And I mean, I'm talking about getting stuck in my moodiness to like, you know, projecting my moods out. People, you know, being afraid of me to be around my mood. You know what? That's, that doesn't happen for me anymore in my life. I'm able to communicate. I'm able, it's, you know, it's part of lifting the curse. I can artfully communicate my truth in a healing way and that's what we're doing and when something negative doesn't come my way well when it comes my way now i'm like okay what am i gonna learn from this and you know what guys if we do this enough we can start thriving off of it like sometimes when something negative is not happening i'm like where's the juice where's the fuel i need it because you get you start yeah it's like the fuel for your fire to keep going once you learn how to untwist it now don't ever kid yourself I still like when we're in the flow and we're feeling that joy and happiness. That's the end game. That's the goal. But it's it's understanding it's the balance of the all. It's the balance of everything. Use your common sense and apply the balance to everything. That's this world. It's just balance. It's a balance of every single opposite energy in order to get the center. So whatever you're doing, think of the opposite. Whatever's opposite use that energy to come back to one but that first energy always stopped off started off with is part of the equation and it definitely has to do with our conflict this is the five of inspiration the five of wands we're we're ending this and right now it has to do with our sacral chakra this is what they're showing me if we heal with our sacral chakra this is going to help us to expand and that's that's addiction. That's our creative life force energies. So any of you that need to heal from addiction out there, this is part of that. And we can be addicted to people, places, things, and of course, right habits. And we can be addicted to all of them. We have, a, you know, it's just so lower vibrational to sit there and point fingers and say like, you can only be a drug addict or an alcoholic. Guys, we can be addicted to anything that makes us feel that positive charge our brain is just wired that way so we have to look at it all because we're finding the balance right now and we're gonna go within we're gonna go within and use the energy of the hermit and the hermit and temperance are going to help us to restore balance through the moon and the sun and this temperance card is definitely connected to what's going down and the activation is connected to this and it's coming from the moon we're gonna see what's being activated we're gonna confirm it with the star seed tarot achievement because we know we were being challenged we were going to create stability through a challenge and here it is the full moon in earth and it's our achievement of it so we're grounding from the water to the earth it's connected to Kali and Kali is connected to our truths you know this is about our achievements this is success and this message is connected to Kali 
Kali, the black mother, Hindu goddess of nature, wife of the great Shiva, stands balanced on one foot. Her face is stern and a drop of blood can be seen between her dark eyebrows. She dances the ecstatic dance of vict victory that makes the earth quake. She has four arms, two emerging from each shoulder. She carries a one ha in one hand a goblet, which signifies her drinking of the blood of the demon. Rakchaviji. Well, I sure got that wrong. I did not pronounce that right. In another hand, she holds a knife, and in the others, the severed heads of two of her giant victims. Her headdress is decorated with more heads than serpents. She is a fearsome character, and her blue skin contrasts with the blood red sky behind her. Beneath the image of the symbol is a sign for the Sagittarius and the moon disc of the black goddess. And here's our connection to Sagittarius and now the south node of the moon. Drawing the goddess Kali reveals that whatever your opposition, you must pursue a policy of no mercy if you wish to achieve success. Action without inhibition is demanded and you will need to be ruthless in sticking to your plans. However, it is important to realize if you gloat over the defeat of your opponent, then something you value will be lost. We're having a humble charge here. And what we're defeating is the shadow energies, you guys. Do you see the masks she's holding? And this has to do with channeled message from our, from our messages from the masculine and feminine. It was channeled. Masks, the masks that we are removing are directly connected to the curse. And the curse is connected to the revealing of our truths. And our truths help us get back to self. And our getting back to self is our light. As all the black goddesses, you will not find a solution in which you will come out of the matter unscathed. Often with the appearance of Kali, the old astrological answer to a bad moon position, no good will come of it will apply. Kali is the most drastic of the black goddesses and in her death and rebirth role, connected to our resurrections, guys, seeks to, to destroy all that is thought to be a threat to, to survival. And there it is. I'm getting all my words messed up because this is so important. We are taking out all that is a threat to survival. We are luminous warriors. We are luminous warriors of the earth. And what we're doing is we're taking out all the threats to life. We're taking out all the, th the threats to this expansion through us. So this is, a, I'm going to go and fight you. That's what we're ending. We're ending that energy. We are healing through us. We're not fighting with self. We're not fighting with what's happening within the matrix. We're healing through self. We're coming back to one. We're coming back to unconditional love. And we're taking out the shadow energies that are causing separateness and harm. And... You heard this energy. We're, we need to stand strong. We need to stand strong with not giving up. We need to have to stand strong with not going back to our old ways because they're comfortable. The blunt and ad adventurous quality of fire in Sagittarius searches for the ultimate truth no matter how or where it is to be found. And that's key. This is the time we're in, guys. This is the time. It's about the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us, great divine. That's the time we're in. The time for building off of our comfortable illusions, delusions, whatever it is, it's gone. We're not, that's, no, it's not. We're off the truth. Even if it hurts, even if it's hard, it's, it's part of the shift. It's part of the clear path. It's part of what we're building off of now. It's part of this high voltage energy is going to raise our vibration. That's why we can't be scared of the truth and what we fear because it's actually going to activate us and lift us right off. 
And this is connected to the month of December. So there is a connection to December within the Sagittarius energy. The moon is speaking. La Luna is speaking. Thank you, La Luna. Now we're going to confirm it with this deck. Let's confirm it with the Starseed Peril. <laughs> swear to God. Guidance. Well, we have to see what messages just flipped on up. But look, we're connecting to our ancients for guidance. Because it's about our achievement. All right, guys, two cards flipped over and the rest of them did not. So let's just see. Okay. What's happening here? We have reflection and alchemy. So this is her the hermit and what we were discussing. This is happening within. And we're being reflected back within what we need to see. This is about our reflections. That's also why we're using the water energies because the water energies are connected to the reflections as well as so of the two of cups. The two of cups is all about reflections and we know this is about the alchemy between the two. That's what this is about right now. And alchemy will heal us. We just received that message. We'd like you guys to know the guidance is the hierophant in the starseed tarot. This is the answer. This is also connected to the hierophant coming and knocking on our door. And we on the on the new moon in Taurus reading, we received that information and that we know that the hierophant right now is connected to the hermit. So it's a combination of the hermit and the hierophant coming to knock on our door to see to see us and they're connected to the divine they're a messenger right now for the divine and they have something that we need to hear they have some information that we need access to in order to expand and it's connected to this message once starseed has met with reason and recognized the need for structure and order to bring discipline to the explosive creative process. They take the spiritual guidance that takes it to the next level. So we know we're going to the next level. We have, we're understanding that this process is taking us to the next level. For many walking the earth plane, this spiritual leadership is found in a priest, a shaman, or guru who intervenes as an interpreter of the prime creator. Starseed knows that this connection to source needs no intermediary and that the ultimate measure of one's spiritual direction comes from within. So this is still finding the balance from the messages receiving we're without, but we always go within. That's it. We always go within to find where we're going to find what we need to see. It's being reflected back to us through our signs and synchronicities, but then we go within and do the work. Throughout civilization, humans have erected great effigies of worship, like the great Sphinx depicted in this key. Within her mighty paws is the Buddha, one of the greatest master teachers ever to walk in this realm. Perhaps the greatest lesson for the true seeker as taught by Buddha is that we are the creators of our own harmony or suffering. And hence, we are at the cause and effect of our own karma. And that's why we're confirming what Kali had to say. Because we are the co-creators. This is about our achievement. And it's through us. Guidance is about honoring the spiritual traditions that have served humanity throughout time in its quest to understand the spiritual meaning of life. For some, this is found in an external force, religion, ceremony, and the leadership. But some individuals 
have in their services at any given spiritual community. For others, all that is holy is found within. Throughout the sacred connection, they glean directly from our own godliness. This important key invites the Quran to consider the following. Where do I find my spiritual guidance? What are my own convictions and beliefs about creation and spirit? How do I co-create my own spiritual epiphanies? Am I being called to help others on their spiritual path? Where do I place my faith? And how do I perceive religious law and ceremony? What wisdom do I glean from the past and mar as markers of my spiritual journey? Am I living my truth? And this all equates back to your truth. And this is about, you know, we are all connected to others and others, we can receive messages. But at the end of the day, or are, are, are part of what we're creating, but at the end of the day, this is what resonates within. This is about our universe within. This is about our connection to the divine within. So what's right for someone else's journey and someone else's healing path may not be the right piece for us. So we have to learn how to understand this within. We have to understand what is us. And that's really what this message is really saying. We, what is, what are you? Where, what works for you? Because yes, some religious traditions work, but some don't. They're not going to necessarily work for you. It might work for that other person, but it's not going to work for you. So what works for you? Because how you're going to come back to one is what works for you. And it has to resonate with your journey, with your healing path, with your unique healing path. Okay. We've received all the messages. I think uh, we're, who's going to close this out? We're going to get closed out over here. This is what I'm feeling called to do, the sacred rebels. Where are we going? And there it is. number 33 this is also a master number and we are now connected to the heavens we are seeing what we need to see we've cleared the path just as we receive gifts in the physical world through the thoughtfulness of others to acknowledge how much we mean to them so too we receive gifts on other levels including the spiritual level a spiritual gift is something that happens through grace we can ask for help and it may be given in response to a request. Mm -hmm. All requests for help are answered. A spiritual gift can also be given without us asking for anything at all, or at least not consciously. Sometimes it is our hearts that cry out for help. While we are busy getting on our own to-do lists, we often stop to think about, we don't often stop to think about what our hearts might need. If we do, an immediate solution is not obvious. We just get on with life, either letting the issue be or taking the more painful option of dwelling on it without seeing how it might be resolved. Mm -hmm. However, there is a loving benevolence in life that knows exactly what we need and how it can best come to us, even when we are not quite so clear. There it is. We know we're not quite so clear, but now we're gonna be clear. Mm -hmm. This force actively seeks to assist us in walking our life path. That loving sweetness is being offered to you now, or soon it will be in the form of a spiritual gift. Your spiritual gift may be symbolic. It may be something that seems ordinary but holds a lot of meaning to you. It might be an object that catches your eye and mesmerizes you. You might think you are appreciating how lovingly it looks but it is the underlying energy that captures you, something in its appearance, color, or shape, and it is perhaps answering an unspoken prayer. It is not the object that is the gift. That is just the unwrapping. The actual gift is subtle yet effective empowerment. It is like a spiritual booster shot that helps you move forward in life with an additional zing Extra strength and a greater peace. And there it is. This is everything we've discussed all into one oracle. We're getting an extra zing of high voltage. And we know that this is about, at the end of the day, our forward movement with our freedom horse. 
and we know that we're not seeing something clearly it's fuzzy but we need to see it and we're seeing it and we're being gifted and we discussed at the new moon in taurus reading that this was going to be different this time that usually we're activated from within to without but this time we're being activated from without to within and that's connected to this message the seeker of orbs and there it is this is we're seeking to see something we're seeking to see something and follow it we're following the light once again too the four of cups we're following the light within the dark And it's taking us to our expansion. There's the Ace of Pentacles. And there's the Solar Deity. There's the Sun. There's the Horse. Guys, there it is. We expand. And we, come, we have come full circle. We're expanding because we're moving on the path. It's time to go. And there it is. It's time to go. It's time to go home and we're going home and we're going home by the light we are seeking and expanding it through us, through our energy. And as you can see, we have raised our vibration with this high voltage charge. That sure looks like a high voltage charge to me. And look, we are lifting off and expanding with the energy of the sun. The sun is connected to the lovers, as we can see right here. Look at that. We're lifting off and we're expanding, and we're expanding together as one. Healed, harmonized with a raise of vibration. Much love and healing vibes sent your way to create with today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.